All right, let's get started with lecture one, measurements. This is the first lecture in our introductory unit, um, tools of the trade. The essential questions that need to be addressed in this lecture are, what are the essential parts of a measurement? What measurement system do chemists use? And what are the fundamental SI units? These three questions you need to be able to answer by the time we're done with this lecture. So let's start. What exactly is a measurement? Well, first of all, by definition, a measurement is a quantitative observation. The word quantitative means numerical number. Um, there are three major parts to any measurement that you have to um, include in order for the measurement to be correctly written. First of all, it must include a number, which is the quantitative observation. It must include an uncertainty, which is the error in the measurement, and a unit so that we understand what is it that we are actually measuring here. For example, we have an electronic balance here, and let us pretend that we're going to put an object on that balance and determine the amount of mass that object has. So let's say we do that, and the balance reads something like 50.23. Well, that's our numerical number uh, that tells us how much mass that object has. But we also need to include the uncertainty or the error in the measurement. This is done by making a plus or minus sign, which gives us a range of the error in our measurement. In this case, this balance would have an error of 0 0.01. Now at this point, it's okay if you do not understand how to determine the uncertainty in a measurement. In later lectures, you're going to learn how to do that. Um, besides the, num the numerical number and the uncertainty, we also have to include the unit. Since we are measuring in, in mass, we have to use a mass unit. This balance measures in grams, and so therefore we would indicate that as a little g to represent the gram. All right, so that is a measurement and what needs to be included in a measurement. Okay, so what system do we use as chemists um, to, to, to measure objects? Well, we use the SI system. That stands for International System of Units. This system is used by all chemists throughout the world so that we can communicate with one another. This SI system is quite easy. It's derived from the metric system, which you're probably familiar with in other science and math classes. The fundamental SI units that we use in chemistry can be found on page 5 in your packet. So let's turn to that really quickly and look at those fundamental SI units. You're going to need to know these. Um, the fundamental SI units uh, for these particular uh, types of quantitative measurements such as mass, length, time, temperature, and so forth. For instance, the mass unit um, that is the fundamental unit is the kilogram. For meter, or for length, it's the meter. For time, it's the second. For temperature, it's Kelvin, and so forth. You will use all of these in chemistry other than uh, the candle. We won't use luminosity very much. All right, so make sure you come familiar with those fundamental SI units. All right, well, let's look at some other uh, types of measurements. Let's look at mass, all right? What exactly is mass? Mass is a, a very common measurement used in chemistry. By definition, um, mass is a measure of the resistance of an object to the change in its motion or the amount of material an object has. In other words, the more material an object has, the more stuff it's made up of, the more mass it has, and the harder it is to change that object's motion. The fundamental SI unit for mass is the kilogram again. And essentially, if you want to compare um, what the kilogram is to pounds, we would say that one kilogram is equivalent or equal to about 2.2 pounds and you need to know that. Um, the kilogram is quite large for chemistry so we often use instead of the kilogram we use grams or milligrams um, because we're measuring very small objects in chemistry. 
all right? Now, what about weight, though, all right? Often we use mass and weight interchangeably, but are they the same thing? And the answer is no. Weight is different than mass, okay? Remember that mass is more or less the amount of material the object is made up of, whereas weight is not only mass, but it is the amount of gravitational force that that object is experiencing. For example, um, your mass is the same on Earth as it is on the moon. No difference, because the amount of material you're made up of doesn't change. However, your weight does change. The gravitational force on the moon is smaller than on Earth. Therefore, you will weigh less on the moon than on Earth. All right? So gravity, or so in other words, mass doesn't change. It's the same on your location, whereas um, weight changes based on the amount of gravity. All right? So there's the difference between mass and weight. All right, let's talk about volume really quickly. Volume is another common measurement that we make. Uh, in chemistry. Uh, by definition, volume is the amount of space that a substance occupies. For instance, if you take a look at a block, uh, a block, it, uh, the amount of volume that it takes up is determined by its dimensions. Uh, for instance, you learned in math that if you take the length times the width times the height of a block, you will get its volume. So for instance here in this block, if you measure the length, it would be one meter. If you measure the, the width, it is also one meter. And if you measure the height, it is one meter. So it's essentially taking um, one meter times one meter times one meter, and you end up getting one cubic meter. And it turns out that one cubic meter is the SI, the fundamental SI system, uh, unit for volume, all right, is the cubic meter. However, in chemistry, the cubic meter is really large, way too large than what we use. So we scale it down, and we actually use the cubic decimeter, which is more or less a cube size out of the cubic meter. Um, a cubic decimeter is also equivalent to a liter, which you're probably more familiar with. If you look at this um, block here that I have, this box is exactly um, has a volume of one um, cubic decimeter. That means that the length of this is one decimeter, the depth is one decimeter, and the height is one decimeter. So one times one times one is one cubic decimeter. But this cubic decimeter, which is also a liter, is broken down into 1,000 cubes or 1,000 boxes. And the size of one of these cubes, if I can get it out, the size of one of those cubes here, if you measure the length of it, it would be in centimeters. So this is one centimeter, the depth is one centimeter, and the height is one centimeter. And this gives us a volume of one cubic centimeter, which is also one milliliter. And so we use the cubic decimeter and the cubic centimeter quite a bit in chemistry. Um, or we use the liter or the milliliter. All right, as you can see from this box. This is a very important key relationship that you should know um, for the test or the quiz. All right, so there is volume. What about temperature? Well, temperature, by definition, is a measurement of how hot or how cold an object is. It also tells us the direction in which heat will flow. Heat always flows from an object that is warm to an object that is cold. Um, that's really important for us to know, and so make sure you know that for the quiz. Um, the scales. Well, for temperature in chemistry, we're going to use the Celsius scale, and we're going to use the Kelvin scale. The Celsius scale is based on the freezing point of water at sea level, which is zero degrees Celsius, and 
the fact that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at um, sea level. Those two measurements determines the Celsius scale. Um, the Kelvin is a little bit different, and we'll look at the Kelvin in just a minute. But what I want you to understand is you're going to often have to relate the Kelvin scale to the Celsius scale. And you're going to use this equation right here to do so. So um, let's say, for instance, you measure in the lab uh, the temperature of an object to be 25 degrees C. To find the Kelvin of that object, you're just going to add 273.15 as this equation indicates. That would tell us that the temperature in Kelvin of that object is 298.15 K. All right. Now if you needed to go to the reverse and you have the Kelvin, you need to find the Celsius um, temperature, then all you need to do is take the Kelvin temperature and subtract 273.15 and that will give us our temperature in Celsius. All right. Now Kelvin um, is important because zero degrees Kelvin, which is often referred to as absolute zero. When an object has zero degrees Kelvin, or zero Kelvin, we should say, it has no energy, and therefore the object has no motion. Now, we really have never established zero degrees or zero Kelvin before um, at this point. It seems to be an impossibility. Maybe one day we'll achieve zero Kelvin. But just to note that when zero Kelvin is established, there is absolutely no energy, and therefore there is no motion that exists. All right, so that, there are some important types of measurements that we make, mass, volume, and temperature. You need to know those units um, and those um, scales that we use for those particular types of measurements. Okay. The last thing I want to mention really quick is the... Um, on page 5, gives you the prefixes for the um, metric system that we use, um, which is um, the SI system, more or less. Um, these prefixes um, refer to a certain amounts. You need to know the value of those prefixes. So you need to know that, for instance, um, a kilo means a thousand, hect hecto means a hundred, uh, deca means ten, um, DESA is one uh, tenth of our base unit and so forth. There's actually uh, the base units that we will use in chemistry, which are up here, the base unit. Um, the meter is a base unit, the gram is a base unit, the liter is a base unit, and for time, the second is a base unit. So for instance, if we look at the gram, um, and we said that what if we had one kilogram? Well, one kilogram, it, the kilo means a thousand, so that means that you have a thousand base units. In other words, you would have one thousand grams. If you have one um, decagram, that means you have ten grams. If you have um, one hectogram, that means you have a hundred grams. Um, if you have one centigram, that means you have one thousandth, or sorry, sorry, one hundredth of a gram. A milligram is one thousandth of a gram. And so that's kind of how the metric system works there. Um, we will spend more time in class looking at the metric system. So that is it for this particular lecture. Uh, make sure you review your notes really well and prepare for the quiz over this lecture. So we'll see you until next time.